So let's take a look at Nomia Teach and how we would use it in the classroom. So I'm going to do things a little bit back to front this time. Previously I've looked at apps and then we've talked about how to use it in the classroom. This time I'm turning it around a little bit. So Nomia Teach, which we are going to go inside and take a look at in subsequent videos, is just to me one of the best screencasting apps out there if not the best i think it surpasses all the others like edge of creations and show me and screen chomp and explain everything i do like explaining everything as an alternative but if i have to use anything i always go back to nomia teach i just think it has so many more options available probably the only flaw if you want to call it a flaw is that it is very much designed for education so if you are not a teacher then you can still use it and get around it but the uh, registration process um, the requirements for each and every screencast that you do does make it a little bit awkward to use from that point of view however in saying that i'm a teacher so and this course is designed for educators so if you're looking for something for lessons classroom input and great screencasting for your students then I don't think you can beat this one okay so for teachers you can record concepts ideas and strategies for any of those areas that are a bit tricky or even not a bit tricky here's where you can go to your common core standards and record each of the concepts or ideas or strategies around how you would apply those standards so it's perfect for that it's brilliant for demonstration modeling and practice and modeling is a really important one because when we visually demonstrate to students how to do something they're far more likely to take it away and apply it and then be able to use it and one of the things that i always do is not just do a presentation or a screencast for my kids to watch I'll make sure it's reciprocal so I get them to show me using this screencasting application what they've actually learned so flip teaching group work or homework and I talked a fair bit about that in the introduction so I'm not going to go through that again sharing of information with parents and I briefly discussed this in the introduction but I think the screencasting apps are brilliant for this because, you know, I used to, uh, in my classroom, send a newsletter home every few weeks or so and give parents ideas and let them know what's going on in the classroom and show them what the students were doing in terms of work. And this way you could just really quickly do a, a screencast, put some photos in of some of the work that you have been doing or excursions that you've been attending or even if there is you know if you're doing a specific concept like algebra for example you could have put that into your newsletter and parents then know how to help their students when they come home to do their homework so you can also use it for sharing of information with teachers so for your teacher meetings i think it's great to do that collaborative thing where you can pull your resources and pull your ideas and because all teachers have different skill sets so it'd be a great opportunity for those teachers that have got lots of ideas and lots of resources to be able to share their knowledge with everyone else the other thing in saying that is that i think i think this is a really good way for your teaching group so let's say that you teach grade grade one so all of the grade one teachers could get together and let's say my skill set I'm particularly good at English and spelling and the teacher next to me might be particularly good at, at teaching time or might have some ideas for that and someone else might be be good with science and so all the teachers have different skill sets as well so I could do all the screencasts for spelling and someone else could do the screencast for time and someone else could do the screencast for science and that way there's a huge time sharing element to being able to use screencasts so that you can easily share your resources and collaborate together now for students students can record their work or their homework i think it's a great way to be able to present what you have learned so that you're not just doing the same old worksheet type Thing or writing in a notebook you know kids are demonstrating 
showing what they've actually learned. They have to really think about it in terms of pictures and text and you know how they're going to use diagrams to present what they know and I, I think it's a great way to present knowledge. Demonstration of a learned concept, the, the principle's the same. Sharing of information with each other. So this is again you know, similar as teachers can share information with each other. I think students can share information with each other as well. Everyone does look at things in a different way. So it's a great way to, to one, see how other people think and two, you know, put everything in one big arena and pull what you actually got out of something and then you're more likely to gain more from it. So for example, if you were reading a particular book, you might be seeing it from one perspective and someone else might be seeing it from another. And it might be a perspective that you hadn't thought of before. For mentoring and peer tutoring, we did talk about that in the introduction, so I'm not going to go over it. And for oral presentations, and again, I did talk about that in the introduction as well. But I want to stress that I think this is a really good way to introduce to students who are having problems with speaking and listening this is a way for them to overcome that so they're still doing the oral presentations they're still using their speaking and listening skills you know in their own private setting and they're not going to get so embarrassed and so and feel so self-conscious and then once they've built their confidence and they feel better about using their voice and they've learned about voice projection and expression and all of those kinds of things, then they're more likely then to feel more comfortable standing in front of the classroom. So the following videos demonstrate how to use Know Me to Teach in the classroom environment. And I also have a video that demonstrates the components of the application as well. And do remember that I did do this on the iPad. So the audio quality is not as good as some of the other videos in this course have been because it just is a little scratchier on the iPad. I can fix it a little bit in Camtasia but it's not perfect. So thank you and let's move on to the next video. We are going to learn about the concept of counting on today and we're going to use this great app called Know Me Teach to help us to learn. As you can see I already have one circle which is kind of like a counter. And I'm going to add four more counters. So let's count together. We have one already, two, three, four, five. Now using our pen tool, I'm going to make that black. We're going to add the numbers one, two, three, four, five. And all together we have five blue counters. Now what I want to do is add two more counters and this time we're going to use pink. So let's add one, two and again I'm going to use my pen tool and write one, two and all together we have two pink counters. Now I want to know how many counters I have all together. And by using the strategy of counting on, we can learn this quickly and easily. So what counting on is, is that we find the answer to our number question by always starting with our biggest number. And in this case, the biggest number is five. So let's take a look and see that we have five blue counters and two pink counters. And as I said before, I'm going to actually change the colour to help you see, the biggest number is five. Now we don't have to count all of those counters again because we already know that we have five blue counters. So what we can do is count on from the number five. So we're going to count five, six, seven. So all together, we have, just let me write this first, we have seven counters. Okay, so let's try that again. This time we're going to use yellow counters. So let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six. And we're going to use our pen tool and count again. 
whoops, this, we need to make it black. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we have six yellow counters all together. And we're going to add four green counters. So it's one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So we have four green counters. Now, the biggest number is the number six. So we don't have to count all of those six counters again. We're just going to count on from the number six. So we have six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So all together we have ten counters. Now isn't that so much easier than having to count all those counters again? So to recap, what are the counting on rules? Always go with the bigger number. So we can, we can say always use bigger number. The next rule is you have the biggest number count on from there. Let's have a look at one more number question. So we have two counters and now we're going to add four more. So we might use red this time. One, two, three, four. And I'm going to use my tool to pop those numbers in. One, two, three, four, so we have four here and two here. Now this time it's a little bit trickier because I put the bigger number on the bottom to try to trick you. Now which one is the largest number? It is the second one, which is the number four. So we have to now count from four, five, six, and so all together we have six counters. Did you get tricked? I hope not. It's very easy and this helps you with your counting and it's much faster too when you use the counting on strategy. So remember always start with the biggest number first and your counting will be a lot faster and a lot easier.